Hey there, it's Kathy Cates and Melissa Hines from the Institute for Pelvic Health. And you're watching Demystifying the Pelvic Floor, weekly videos providing real and simplified pelvic floor education for your real clinical situations. We've got you covered. And today we're going to chat about the nerve distribution of the pelvic floor. So here is a lovely photo of all the various nerve distributions within the pelvic floor. And there's a lot of them. We talk about the pudendal nerve mostly because that is, um, you know, it innervates from the clitoris pretty much all the way down into the anus. So that one we often, um, I feel like diagnose, even though it could be coming from another nerve, but um, we've got iliohypogastric, which is usually like kind of that mons pubic, pubis, um, pubic bone area, the ilioinguinal, which will run in like that ilioinguinal ridge. Um, we have the perineal, which is kind of like radiates out, like really in that inner thigh area. Um, tell us like with that if that there's irritation there, like what's a common thing that your patient might complain of? Um, it's usually, I mean, typical nerve symptoms are burning, right? Um, pudendal nerve, sweating, rash, um, from that autonomic response, but generally burning, but it can also be like this really like diffuse, like achiness. Um, a lot of times with iliohypogastric, it can also like kind of be in that bladder area. So it could be like kind of urinary urgency frequency types of symptoms or just general bladder irritation. So you just want to think when you're thinking of any sort of urinary bowel, sexual reproductive dysfunction, like it may not just be coming from the viscera. If there is urinary urgency, it's not always the bladder that's the problem. It can also be these nerves. So you can, um, and when you go through history, these nerves all come from the lumbar, or, or most of them are from the lumbar, lumbar and sacral um, spine. So if there was a trauma or an injury to these areas, even like a mild disc herniation can sometimes just irritate these nerves. And like anything, nerve irritation takes a long time for those symptoms to improve. So also knowing that as well, they do improve, but it's not like, you know, a muscle issue where it may be four to six weeks and it's feeling much better. This can be much longer. So knowing that too, and a lot of times with the pelvic floor dysfunctions, that's why they take longer to resolve because usually there is some neuropathic component just because those pelvic floor muscles are so intertwined with these nerves. Um, Didn't you say too, Melissa, that you might even see sometimes like redness or even itching? And I know that's something that I learned from you I'm sure I learned that in school, but I'd forgotten about that. So could you just say like a little bit about that vasomotor response? I think it would be super helpful. Yeah. So just like, um, shingles <laughs> where it creates a rash, um, and kind of these symptoms that you wouldn't necessarily think of like nerve, like symptoms, um, it, especially with pudendal nerve, because of its innervation at that whole like vaginal opening vestibule, it will, it can create discharge, redness, erythema. Um, so just knowing that because you can easily palpate the obturator internus, that area, you can do a, a Tonell sign. And if you're in that area and it's reproducing symptoms, or, or increasing the symptoms, then you know that it's probably the pudendal nerve that could be causing more of these like yeast-like symptoms. Um, you know, obviously if you've done cultures and things like that, um, that are negative, but it can reproduce similar things to what you would think yeast and um, just crazy discharge. So, um, I think, and then you've got all the clinial nerves, which are more in the posterior. And those are more the sacral nerve roots, the coccygeal plexus. Um, but it's just so important to know these nerves. And we have a really special template in our um, 
clinician binder that you can just have in your clinic to quickly look at. And like, if there is a funky symptom, just like check out if potentially one of these nerves can be involved. Um, and I would say, because we don't have time often in clinic to like be searching the web. Right. And you're like, oh, that's right. The nerves, they, that all those nerves that innervate the pelvic floor and you just yep. go right to this handout and like, you've got it. Yep. <laughs> you got it. So thank you, Melissa. And that's a wrap. Did you like this video? If so, hit like, and subscribe, please share with your colleagues and let us know your biggest challenges in taking care of patients and nerve issues. <laughs> Sorry, and subscribe to our email list at instituteforpelvichealth.com to get your free guide for tips for managing your challenging pelvic exam. You'll get access to our free weekly pelvic health content. And be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we'll post more pelvic health tips. And we're thrilled to announce that we launched Beyond the Kegel, the only interdisciplinary AANP accredited online course for NPs and CNMs. Beyond the Kegel is six modules packed with practical information that we most likely didn't get in our training. You'll get videos, templates, patient education handouts in both English and Spanish, hands-on demos, everything that you need to confidently help your patients with pelvic floor dysfunction. By simplifying the pelvic floor, we'll improve patient outcomes and your provider experience. Thanks for watching and spreading the word. Let's revolutionize pelvic health and we'll see you soon.